Mm, what is up you guys and of course welcome back to another episode of who was really better it's been quite some time since i've uploaded one of these and while i will actually for the life of me make sure to have this episode out every week from now on i really want to say so always you know i'm sorry really really enjoy this episode but the time just hasn't been there and it's been very very unfortunate due to that that said however we're going to talk today about Kurem versus Hydreigon. These are the two special attacking nukers of the Generation 5. And they have quite the, one would say, niche above them. One thing that stands out between these two is that these are two dragon types without the dragon dance. There are very few with that, and these are the people that stand out because, well, they are defensively active, hence the dragon dance doesn't make sense for them. However, they really are lacking setup but are hitting just extremely hard, very high special attack, and very, very good bulk overall, and access to recovery, even though their typing aren't necessarily that defensive. But overall, these Pokemon has been relevant since it was released, and while the both of them have fallen from OU to the lower tier, which had mostly to do with the third types involved in Generation 6, they still are just as potent and shake different variety of Pokemon due to this very reason. These are two really, really strong Pokemon. In a league format, they're even stronger because they're ninjas around them, very broad move pool, and can cover much just above any type of combinations that are forced to be dealing with, which makes these two Pokemon very, very interesting and actually quite underrated. They definitely are in the shadows of the Laddie Twins, and of course, um, the Pokemon that are in OU, such as Salamence and Dragonite, which stands, of course, out, even though these two Pokemon are just as potent, if not even more potent, because of their stab combination, which are. Like I said, while working against them, it's offensively really, really, really strong. And if it's done right, these two Pokemon are very, very hard to actually deal with. So with that said, it's up to me to go over their stats, move, pull, and work, and theme to find out which one of these two that really are better. And we're going to start off with the one introduced first, which was, theoretically, Curem. Now, Curem in its own right is very interesting. While it really has to be said, um... Curum is sadly mostly known because of its combination with Curum Black and Curum White, but Curum Black as its own is actually not that bad. Uh, While well, of course the same type of combination, I really just have to say that, it really isn't happening that much with the other forms. Basically the other forms are allowing the 130 in attack in or special attack to be 1 in 70 and that's about it. So I think it's worthwhile mentioning that. Besides that, it is a very very fairly bulky Pokemon. Now, Dragonite's combination has its issues. Ice is always a bad defensive typing. Dragon do cover and resolve some of it, but far from all of it. Uh, so we're resistant in electric grass and water, and these are of course only due to the dragon combination. We also should have had a resistant ice, which is more dragon. That resistance is now due with. So that said, we have weakness to dragon, fairy, finding rock, and steel. And of course, all of these weaknesses are, well, very 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 common to say the least and of course stealth rock weakness is one of those things that just stinks a little bit extra but overall the type of combination really isn't something to be trifled with dragon and ice really just allows it to hit hard and there really aren't that many dragon types that want to deal with curem because of the ice stab because of course ice hits dragon types harder too and it also has enough force and, and of course special attack to be able to force with either of this type of combination easily. Rock type usually have something like ground or flying to itself to be a combined with which make Curem be to be very effective to hit them super effectively anyway. Though it has to be very about of course this priority in steel moves and fighting moves and of course fairy overall fairly fairy shakes this Pokemon really good and it really shouldn't be underestimated. Curem should never say it against a fairy type because it just doesn't hit it in the right way and that's something to be of course, concerned with, if anything. That said though, we also have an ability to cover, and while both Hydreigon and Curum will have one ability, uh, of course, effective, pressure is the one being on, of course, Curum. Um, it isn't the best ability, but at the same time, as I said before, due to its bulky nature and having access to light of roost, pressure stalling is an option. While not the strongest pressure stall by any means, it still is one of those things that stands out. Um, looking at the lines of close comments and everything like that, you could potentially stall something out. And even with Protect in mind, it's it's decent at that. Just just not the best one, and that's really just what to really take away from here. Pressure is a decent ability, maybe not the best for Kyurem. Uh, now, when it comes to stats, however, Kyurem stands out. It stands out a lot. It has a really really broad 
variety to bring to the table, and I really think this Whisper size just that 125 HP. Yes, yeah, that's that's bulky, and 130 in both of its attack and special attack. That's that's a lot. That's definitely above average. Knight in its defenses isn't necessarily all that bad. That would combination 125 in its HP. Yeah, it, this is a bulky Pokemon. It really is no way to go around it. And it's speedy too. 95 base speed, while not the fastest, it's still up there as one of the, I would say, faster, bulkier Pokemon. It's on the level of Cresselia. Maybe not as defensive, but HP is definitely up there. And it just is the type of combination that might bring it down a notch. But overall, Kyurem is a very, very defensive Pokemon. It's definitely one of the fattest Dragon or Ice typing, and having this as a combination just makes it that much tougher. But Kyurem Black is definitely a very, very strong defensive Pokemon. It can pull off both it could potentially be called a tank, potentially. Specs is something that's very, very common with this Pokemon. But I myself really like the subset together with the likes of Recovery, which Roost and Leftovers. It just is one of those Pokemon that pulls it up effortlessly. And it, since it's so effectively hitting hard already, it really doesn't need that much of investment to do a lot of damage to any opposing team, to be quite honest. But when it comes to move pull, it's quite a mixed bag on Kyurem. It's definitely up there at the same time that it's lacking a few things that would have made it even greater. Uh, first and foremost, like I said, it's a special offensive beast, and while its offensive stats are just as vast, it's a special side of Kyurem that really just stand out, where it likes of Icy Wind, Asian Power, the stabs, and of course the regular stuff in Ice Beam, Blizzard, Dragon Pulse, Draco Meteor, and Ice <laughs> Outrage, of course. You know, because um, Ultra Sun and Moon really hasn't been anything new, we actually got Noble Roar, which really isn't helping it quite a lot, and I won't de deny that. Uh, when it comes to team moves, you get some decent things, yeah, such as, of course, Light Screen, you get Dragon Claw, Bruce, as mentioned before, Shadow Ball, Rock Tomb, Facade, Steel Wing, Focus Blast, Shadow Claw, Payback, Fly, which is really great, actually, on it because of fighting, <laughs> opposing fighting types. Uh, Rock Slide, Dragon Tail, as always, uh, to be able to utilize a private and force Flash Cannon, which is really the only thing it can use against other fairy types. So Flash Cannon with 130 special attack, it's decent, it's definitely decent. It also has Iron Head for the tutor move, but Flash Cannon, in my honest opinion, are definitely better. Uh, because now on the special side, we get another move that really is one of the big ones, and that's Earth Power. Combination Ice Beam and Earth Power really has a few switch ins. We're looking at the likes of Rotom, um, and I think what is that, Bronson, and re they really aren't that many. It's one of those really, really great combinations. And um, it also has filler moves in Center the Butt and Signal Beam. But overall, its move pool, while I would say lacking, is still very, very relevant. And of course, with the Sea Crystal. Uh, Kyurem is able to do a lot of things very good. Sea Focus Blast and also not from Sea Blizzard is a really, really scary thing before it's been dealing with. And just overall, Kyurem Black's move pool really doesn't need to be that broad because it is able to hit super effectively or neutral and very hard no matter what. Ice Beam and Earth Power, than before, is that combination that just resolved the majority of the matchup and then you fill that out with the likes of Focus Blast. Uh, to be able to deal with, I think, potentially a uh, brown song or Rotom, or you do whatever anybody else would do and actually just pick Toxic, resolve possible issues that could be coming with that way, and then a Roost, and possibly Life, or we want to go that route. But overall, Kyurem is very, very dangerous, has a very few switch-ins, and while it doesn't switch in itself very well due to its weaknesses, it still is one of those Pokemon that, due to its natural bulk, really can force out switches very, very easily and end ever a long time in a matchup if it's done right. So with Kyurem out of the way, how does Hydreigon really stand up to that? Well, it does stand fairly all right. While well, there are a lot of things more here to talk about, and this is mainly due to the vast functionality and versatility to Hydreigon to start off with. First and foremost, Dark Dragon type combination is a mixed bag. It was better in Generation 5. Fairy really did a good number on it, and it has to have a rough time, even though it's still versatile, but just mm, falls short on a few matchups. Uh, first and foremost, immunity and psychic, always nice. Then versus dark, electric, fire, ghost, grass, and water. So, yeah, that's quite a lot. Dark and dragon combination really isn't that bad. Really, really endeavors a lot of type combos. However, there are a lot of weaknesses to watch out for. And one of them being, of course, a private one, which is a U-turn with bug, which always is unfortunate. 
Uh, then we have the dragon, which always is bad finding, and ice, two priority users there, of course, potentially with first impression, one could say free, and of course, the very, very full times weak to fairy. This is something that definitely has been holding Hydreigon back. While I wouldn't say it made it bad, but it's definitely a, a thing that made the matchup not as reliant, and Hydreigon really has to pay a toll for that because it hasn't had its tools to really, really sting on the fair types. Outside of that, this is a Pokemon that really have been abusing specs in their generations before it, or Scarf in Generation 5, and what's doing this really well. And being forced to not be able to do that is something that has lowered its viability of a few matchups. So I think I've said that a few times now that we get the point. Um, Ability-wise, Levitate, it's good. One another immunity in of course ground based move in earth earth power earthquake water and whatnot. It, it's great. It's definitely something to watch out for and of course appreciate. It also alleviates yourself of not being weak to like the spikes, toxic spikes, and of course sticky web. Um overall this is this is great. It it li really leaves something about Reagan to be able to do, and that's pivoting because it does get access itself to U-turn, and that's something that it's very, very appreciated. Having Levitate means that you can pivot fairly all right, only have to watch out for Stealth Rocks. I think Hadragon does it really all right. Uh, stat wise, it's on par with Kyurem here. There are a few things that stand out. Knight 2 in its HP, while still high, is not as high as Kyurem. 105 is not as strong as Kyurem. 90 in both of his defensive are exactly like Kyurem. 125 special attack, while that's a lot, it's still not as a lot as Kyurem, but the speed tier is standing out here, 98. It's a niche speed tier and doesn't bar the one with the one other Pokemon, so that's always going to be unfortunate. However, that does make it faster than Kyurem. And also, it's the very reason it makes a really good, good Scarfer is because it does deal very well with the knighted base Scarfers, because there really aren't that many, and the ones that try will fall because of the speed tier that Hydreigon represents. That said, though, in my humble opinion, I do believe the special attack are just as good, if not, you know, you know, it's, I think it, it doesn't change that much in damage output between 125 and 130, and the defenses are roughly the same. In com combination with a better defensive typing than Ice and Dragon, I would say that while the bulk is worse, it still has a better option coming in and out of situations than Kyurem has in his regular form, so that said, yeah. Hydreigon stands out. It's definitely not as good stat-wise as Dan Kyurem, but at the same time, it's um, it's type combination really do allow it to function defensively better than Kyurem, even though I wouldn't call neither of these a good defensive typing overall. So the thing we have remaining is its move pool, and yeah, Hydreigon has a really niche move pool. It's it's really up there as one of the better ones, but then it's not that, depending on how one of you it's. First and foremost, I think we're going to acknowledge its stab combination. It will have Dragon Pulse, it will have Outrage, uh, Draco, Dark Pulse. Uh, it lacks knockoff, unfortunately, it lacks Pursuit, but it has Crunch. So, yeah, it does what I think it should be doing, and that's fairly alright. Uh, outside of that, it does get a few niche moves. Um, well, as I said before, it doesn't get any move that raises its stats outside of Work Up, I do believe. Uh, but we do get the likes of Taunt, which is always going to be useful. The Rain Dance, uh, Earthquake, which really could be helping it out. Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Rock Tomb, Steel Wing, Focus Blast, Blast Charge Beam, uh, Payback, Stone Edge, Thunder Wave, Bulldoze, Rock Slide, Dragon Tail, U Turn, as we mentioned, which does allow with the Pivot, Flash Cannon, which is a natural response to the Fairy types. So and when it comes to the Egg moves, it actually gets the lies of Earth power, but also this generation it got Belch, a very very hard hitting special attack move, and also has action to acrobatics. So this could be actually in function with one another. You want to try that out? Please don't. You also get the elemental fangs, <laughs> which is can be helpful. Hit smash, which hits really hard, one of fifty base. Rocket damage is always going to be great. Uh, and then when it comes to Judo moves, what stands out here is super power, Aqua Tail, Signal Beam. Um, and Iron Tail, which also is one of those moves that you hit for super effective damage. It can also defog. This is one of the few Pokemon here that has an immunity to spikes and toxic spikes, but can defog. Do not underestimate this option. We also have Throat Chop, which could be great if you face the likes of Sylveon or Mega Guard Wars to be able to kind of 
ship them down and actually kind of shake them. Uh, I do believe that's a very, very cool niche to have. But yeah, that's about it. Like, we have the likes of, I believe, Tailwind, Shock, uh, Shockwave, and Spite. Uh, but I don't think they're relevant, though I think they're funny. But overall, uh, Hydreigon's move pool is very vast and it can actually be both physical and special. While it is more effective special for obvious reasons, one really shouldn't underestimate the options of actually be, uh, being able to pull that off. And also, we heard that scream. That's my daughter. I won't record that. I'm pretty sure you people heard that. Uh, anyway, what I'm trying to say here is that Hydreigon's option of being specially offensively active is an option that while I think Cure Black has a better option of doing so, it's still due to piloting, making Hydreigon a bit more versatile. With Defog in mind, it also have a more option to uh, leave to the team, which I think is great. Um, so yeah, overall, Hydreigon stands out as one of those Pokemon that really, really does, while not the best, it still has option to do really, really well. And also, this is a Pokemon, much like Curum, that are able to use Sea Crystals through its full ability. Sea Focus Blast is one of those things that really does help out. And of course, Sea Dragon Pulse or Draco is always a nuke on anything. Um, this Pokemon also, of course, uses specs really well. But as I said, Scarfer is what you usually face. Uh, but even with, of course, the worst thing in mind, it is, could, it's a Pokemon that definitely can use the Lux of Expert Belt to get a Roost and will do very, very well. It's defensive enough to pull some light off. And while, like I said, Curum is able defensively to roost stall and pressure stall, I think Hydreigon's defensive type will allow it to do that more often, even though it isn't as effective. Uh, so overall, Hydreigon is a very, very viable Pokemon. It's just, like I said before, it's a question of which one of these are more viable than the other. And this is where I think we come down to one of those really, really weird dialogues where it will somewhere down the line come down to a personal preference and I really, 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 really won't deny that fact. However, one really has to take a good look at what this Pokemon can bring to a team. And uh, yeah, I think this is where things start to get a bit more clearer. And I think for most people here, it's quite obvious which one is better. And versatility is the name of the game here. Well, I think Kieran Black is the better one offensively infinitely better offensively than um, Hydreigon. It really, really has to be stated. It is just one of those things where Hydreigon can do a lot more than that. Um, it doesn't need to be a specs user, and while the bow can roost, it is one of those things where Hydreigon can defog, and it has an ability to kind of uh, resolve that, while Kyurem itself is weak to rocks, and really need a, actually a team player to be able to get rid of rocks. Hydreigon doesn't have that option against that, and it says that it's naturally better due to that than actually can actually, of course, resistantly really work it defensively better due to it. I really prefer Hydreigon in that aspect, and the pilot really just enforce that. Um, I definitely think the spec set is great on Hydreigon, and you've been able to pivot because you can't predict the matchup and aren't weak to switching in and out necessarily much much in the Linux guy. It really just makes Hydreigon one of the primary actually pivots are and actually nukers i think curum has a lot to a lot of things that make it desirable uh, it just isn't necessarily on par with what i bring to the team and that's the reason it wins this matchup it just it's up there as one of the greatest pokemons ever created and i think fairy types really really damage it how good this pokemon really could be this pokemon isn't bad in ou it just can't be used as well because the tapus really just do a number on it but it really, really brings a lot to the table. It's just unfortunate that it only got one generation to show how extremely good this real Pokemon can be because I think its viability is, like I said, it's still up there. It's one of the greatest. It just has a matchup issue that oh, just doesn't seem to go away. And that's really unfortunate. So yeah, Hadragon is the winner of this matchup. So what, of course, that cover. I really just want to thank, as always, you guys for watching. Make sure to leave a like and if you like that. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe need every following I can get. So, as you guys may or may not know, as always, around this time, I usually cover which Pokemon are facing each other next, but I do kind of want to hype that up a little bit and keep that on the ground. I won't showcase that for anyone until the episode is coming next Sunday. It's my way of saying that I haven't made up my mind which Pokemon I'm going to showcase, to be completely honest, but quite frankly, I think I'm showcasing it kind of kind of makes uh, the hype a little bit less. I kind of want to hype it more on Twitter. So yeah, show your video. Follow me there, Skyrunner. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And yeah, which one of these Pokemon do you think is better? 
And as always, have a great day. Take care, everyone. Bye.